Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We had already started a digital electronics series in which we posted videos that explain digital design concepts with practical examples that you can easily relate to, helping you grasp the basics effortlessly. We will be posting more videos to the digital electronics playlist in which we will also cover important questions most frequently asked in VLSI job interviews. These videos will also be beneficial to students preparing for GATE and other competitive examinations. We won't stop at just theory. Let's roll up our sleeves and get hands-on by coding the circuits in an open source EDA platform and see how these circuits are implemented in VLSI chips. Make sure you watch all the videos in the playlist. Hello all. We understood basics of demultiplexer and decoder in the previous videos. Let's see interview questions on these topics in today's video. If you haven't watched the previous videos, do check them out. These two combinational circuits, the decoder and the demultiplexer, seem very similar. Let's understand their differences. Let's take the example of a decoder and a demultiplexer with the same number of output terminals. That is a 1 is to 4 demultiplexer with 4 output terminals and a 2 is to 4 decoder also with 4 output terminals. From the diagram, we can see that the demultiplexer has only one input data terminal while the decoder has two input data terminals. In general, a demultiplexer has only one input data line that is directed to one of its many output data lines, while the decoder has more than one input data lines which are decoded to output signals. Also, you can see that demultiplexer has select lines, while there are no select lines in the decoder. For a demultiplexer, the select lines determine to which output signal the input data must be connected. Whereas in a decoder, there is no need for select lines as the input data combination itself determines which output signal must be set high. As you can remember, in a decoder, based on the inputs that is A0 and A1, it is determined which of these output signals D0 to D3 should be set high. As an example, if A0 and A1 both are 1, that is the input is 3, then only D3 is set high while the others are set to 0. You don't need any additional select line to determine which of the output signals must be set high. The input signal combination itself determines that. So decoder does not need a select line while a demultiplexer needs select lines. A demultiplexer is used when we need to send one data stream to different output streams based on the condition of select lines. Remember the example of a deserializer that we saw in the previous video where an input stream of 2.4 gigabits per second was sent to four parallel output streams of 622 Mbps. A decoder is used when we need to assign different signal conditions to different values of input code word. As an example, we saw the 7 segment display decoder where BCD inputs of 4 bits wide had to assign 7 bit output code to the 7 segment display. Now that we saw the differences, let's see if we can generate one circuit from the other. The next question is on implementing a 2 is to 4 decoder using a 1 is to 4 demultiplexer. Let's start with a 1 is to 4 demultiplexer. Here is a 1 to 4 demultiplexer with 1 input, 4 output and 2 select lines. And this is its truth table. As you can see, when it, the select lines are 0, 0, the data input is sent to Y0. When it is 0, 1, the data input D in is sent to Y1. When it is 1, 0, it is sent to Y2. When it is 1, 1, it is sent to Y3. We want to generate a 2 is to 4 decoder from this. The truth table of 2 is to 4 decoder is as follows. You can see from these two tables that A0 and A1 is equivalent to the select lines S0 and S1 and Y0 to Y3 are equivalent to D0 to D3 provided D in here is 1. So if D in is made 1, these two truth tables become equivalent. So let's set D in as 1 and make the select lines S0 and S1 as A0 and A1 respectively. Then these terminals Y0 to Y3 
of your D multiplexer will now be representing your D0 to D3 of the decoder. So we have generated a decoder from a D multiplexer. Let's see the Verilog code for this and verify whatever we have done is correct. I have opened the EDA playground platform and this is the code for generating a decoder from a D multiplexer. The code is very simple. We just have instantiated the D multiplexer and for the data input we have given 1 and for the select lines A0 and A1 the inputs of the decoder and for the outputs of the D multiplexer we have assigned the outputs of the decoder. The only thing that's new here is that we have included the D multiplexer Verilog code by giving this tick include Dmux data flow SV and we have reused the demultiplexer code that we had written in the previous video. This is the test bench. We can run to see if it is correct. As you can see, when both A0 and A1 are 0, the data D0 is set to 1. When both are 1, D3 is set to 1. This is how a decoder must function. So we have verified that the decoder that we generated from the demultiplexer is working correctly. Let's move on to the next question. Now let's see if the other way around is possible. Generating a D multiplexer from a decoder. For the binary decoder that we saw in previous video, if we add another active high enable signal such that the circuit operates like the decoder only when enable is high or else when the enable is low, all the outputs of the decoder will be zero. So that would be this truth table. When enable is zero, it doesn't matter what your A1 and A0 are, all the outputs are always 0. But when enable is 1, that is this portion of the truth table, this is the actual functionality of your decoder. Note that this portion of the truth table looks like the demultiplexer with enable being D in. Let's move on to the next question. Implementing functions using decoders. Here, let's implement a sum of product function of min terms 0, 1, 4 and 7 and a product of sum function with max terms 2, 3, 6 and 7. Starting with our sum of product functions which had min terms 0, 1, 4 and 7, the K map is as follows and if you write the expression you would get this 0, 1, 4 and 7. Remember that in the first slide we saw that decoder outputs are nothing but min terms. So implementing an SOP function using decoder is very simple. Since our expression has a maximum of 8 min terms since it's an expression of 3 variables, we need to use a 3 to 8 decoder. And the input of the decoder are the inputs of our function a, b and c. And as we know the output of decoder represents the min terms for this three variable function. Since we already have got min terms at the output of decoder, the only thing that's left to do is to or those min terms to get your output expression. So we need to or 0, 1, 4 and 7 terms to get your output. The output of the function is now represented by this y obtained by oring 0, 1, 4 and 7. Next was the pause expression with max terms 2, 3, 6 and 7. But since representing min terms or in the SOP form is easier in decoder, let's convert this pause form to a SOP form. You must be aware that a SOP expression can be converted to a pause format by taking all the terms absent in the pause expression to be present in the SOP. So the terms 0, 1, 4, 5 are absent in pause, they shall be present in the SOP format. So our SOP expression will have min terms 0, 1, 4 and 5. The K map will be as follows. The expression is this. Now it is same as the previous problem where we can take a 3 to 8 decoder, give the inputs as our functions inputs. We have all the min terms at the output of the decoder. We only need to take the required min terms 0, 1, 4 and 5 and or them to get our output. 
let's move on to the last question that is the implementation of larger decoder using smaller decoder particularly implementing a 3 to 8 decoder from 2 to 4 decoders these are the truth table for the 3 to 8 decoder and the 2 to 4 decoder with the enable that we saw in the previous question to generate 3 to 8 decoder with 8 outputs from a 2 to 4 decoder with only 4 outputs you will need 2 2 to 4 decoders also notice that in the 3 to 8 decoder for the first 4 iterations the y4 to y7 is always 0 and for the last 4 iterations y0 to y3 is always 0 so from this we can understand that at a time only one of these 2 to 4 decoders will be enabled in this part consider that this is represented by one of your 2 to 4 decoders and this portion is represented by your second decoder so for these four iterations decoder 1 is enabled while 2 is disabled and for the last four operations the decoder 2 is enabled and 1 is disabled so the circuit will be as follows and you can note that the A2 will determine which to enable and which to disable. So the A2 which is MSB is 0 for first 4 iterations and then it becomes 1. So if we set A2 to both of the decoder enable when it is 0 it enables your Y0 to Y3 decoder while the Y4 to Y7 is disabled. So when it is 0, this becomes 1 and this is enabled. This remains 0 and this is disabled. A2, A1 and A0. A1 and A0 will be given to the A1 and A0 of both of these decoders. Now we have generated a 3 to 8 decoder by using two 2 to 4 decoders. That's it for today's video. Hope you found the questions interesting. If you felt that the content was useful, do like the video and share it. Join our Telegram community by clicking on the link in the description to discuss among our community of diverse professionals from various domains in the semiconductor industry. Also, you can post interesting interview questions on the Telegram group for discussion. Thank you.